This is JadeCast, your gateway to traditional martial arts and Chinese culture. Brought to you by your host, Shuffle Jonathan Bluestein. Today on JadeCast, I am going to do a reading of a short article written by Jigo Kano-sensei. Jigo Kano-sensei is a pivotal figure in the history of martial arts. He was born in 1860, Common Era, and passed away in 1938. He is the founder of the famous martial art and sport known as Judo, which he developed out of several styles of Japanese Jujutsu. There is a lot to say about the life and history of Jigo Okano and his martial art, which I would not be getting into in this particular lecture. Rather, I would read the words of Kano Sensei himself about the martial art which he created. As Jigo Okano Sensei was an educator and a teacher, a school teacher that is, besides being a martial arts teacher, he has produced quite a lot of written work throughout his lifetime. However, sadly, it is correct to say that in this day and age, the beginning of the 21st century, most of Jigoro Kano's writings have yet to be translated into the English language. And therefore, we only have snippets from his wisdom and experience, some of which I would be reading for you right now. Before reading the article, a little bit of a background is necessary for us to better understand its contents. This is an article written by Kano Sensei in his latter days, after he was already quite a seasoned practitioner in the martial arts. And in this article about the art he created, Judo, Kano Sensei bemoans the manner in which the art came to be practiced amongst many practitioners and schools in Japan and worldwide. Kano intended Judo to be what it's named after, in a soft way. However, with a growing interest in competition, Judo had changed for the worse, as Kano sees it, and he shares these thoughts in one of the last articles he had ever written. And now for its contents. On the Importance of Ukemi by Jigo Okano. Nowadays, one does not see the same clear-cut technique as one used to do. All adopt a very stiff and defensive style, and they appear to be entirely preoccupied with the idea of winning their contest without any sign of aspiring to higher accomplishment. One who aims for the future must not be concerned with present loss or gain. The most important object in judo training is to develop speed and free movement of the body. If one enters a contest with the sole idea of not being defeated, automatically the body becomes stiff and defensive, an unsuitable state for effective, sharp action. Whereas, if one regards all as a matter of captivating speed and free movement of the body, without being seriously concerned about being thrown, sooner or later one will develop the desired qualities and be able to apply them for attack or defense as opportunity offers. To become truly undefeatable in Judo, one should not rely on one's strength, for when one meets a stronger opponent, one will surely be bitten. There are various defensive methods, but the principle is to evade the opponent's strength or by changing one's position to reduce the effect of the strength applied. Another method is by pushing or pulling to weaken the force the opponent intends to apply. To be able to effect any of these defensive actions, one must acquire a free and quick movement of the body. As I have often said, if one hates to be thrown, one cannot expect to become a master of the art. 
by taking throws time after time. One must learn how to take falls and overcome the fear of being thrown. Then one will become unafraid of being attacked and be able to attack the initiative in attack. Only by following this manner of training can one learn true judo waza. Contest and practice, which are both means of training, should be conducted in the way to develop speed and free movement of the body. Well, dear listeners, isn't it quite different the description that Kano Sensei gives us in this short article of his compared with what we see nowadays in sports judo and Olympic judo? And this is not to diminish the skill, ability, fitness, or understanding that many of those judoka have who engage in sports judo, Olympic judo, and such. These are often top athletes, very capable and smart people who work very, very hard. But perhaps, from the point of view of Kano-sensei, they do not necessarily engage in his exact vision of judo as he had created it. I would encourage the listeners who would want to see how Kano probably intended his art of judo to be practiced and applied, to look up videos of Kyuzo Mifune-sensei. Kyuzo Mifune-sensei, a top disciple and long-term student of Kano, really embodies the spirit of movement that Kano-sensei had described in this article I have read for you. If you enjoyed this short reading, then please, by all means, press the subscribe button and follow up on the channel as I would be updating it daily with fascinating martial arts related materials. And if you'd like to learn more, you're always welcome to go on your favorite Amazon website and type in my name in the search box, Jonathan Bluestein. That would lead you to a list of my published books, which are quite popular in the traditional martial arts community. You got books like Research of Martial Arts that you could look up, and the martial arts teacher, as well as others. And if you want to know what I do and teach, you're welcome to go on the website of our international martial arts organization. You can find it at bluejadesociety.com. Blue like the color blue, jade like the gemstone jade, and society like a society. Bluejadesociety.com. And keep in mind, this channel is growing and growing and growing. I'm going to have so many more amazing contents coming up you should really check the channel out out on a frequent basis because lots is coming thank you so much for listening i'll catch up with you next time